Hey everyone, it's Bowen from Inspired Roleplay slash Phallus Corpus Discord channel. Um, this video I'm updating for you is one I'm very excited about. Um, we decided as a community in the Discord channel to actually create a space where we could actually just discuss the hobby of roleplaying and all the different aspects of roleplaying. And um, it went really well, exceptionally well. We're definitely going to have more of these videos in the future. Um, there's a lot of laughs, a lot of wholesome moments, a lot of support for each of us in the community. So if you're looking for a little insight on what role playing really is and what it means to a lot of people who play it, I highly advise that you watch this video. And uh, please hit subscribe and you'll catch more of these videos in the future. So my characters always, they're always going to have that charisma and they're always going to have uh, dexterity. But then everything else is, is this a noble character? Would my character, is my character dumb? Is my character just an airhead? But they're good at people, so I wisdom. Are they gonna be a privileged person who never had to really do anything? Oh, so strength is gonna be to the wayside. The only time I need to worry about my how strong I am is if I can lift the goblet to take the drink, you know? <laughs> so it's like, build things based on the type of character and then things just start making sense as you go along because you know that if you're playing a a noble raised warlock you're probably going to be a little dumb because you'd never really have to learn things people will just tell you what you want to know or you might not be very strong if you've been coddled all your life so when you start doing things like that uh, personally, it just makes it easier because then when you're role playing, your stats and things fit the role play because you've already started to think about that. Mm, definitely. The longer in your mind that you have a character concept fleshed out, the easier over time it will be to actually immerse yourself in that character because you've thought about that character for so long. Well, another thing that I do too, and I was actually talking to Dylan about it the other day, is I love making new characters. Love making new characters. But <laughs> almost all of my characters are pretty much the exact same kind of person. Oh, come on. But like, no, no, I'm not like, they're not all, but like, they're all going to be a little bit like me. Just a little bit. You know, and that way I feel more comfortable emoting in that character. I can think more in that character's mind. But all my characters are very different because I have Vari, who's this like druid that's been in the woods for 200 years by herself. And she doesn't understand the world around her, but she's incredibly intelligent and a hunter of the dreams. And I have Brea, who you guys have played with, who is a gambling addict and kind of an alcoholic and way too sassy for her own good. Oh my you God, know? Is that Yeti? <laughs> I think oh know. my goodness. <laughs> oh, we haven't drank together. You're going to have to wait for it. But then oh, I have another Christ. character, Tome, <laughs> who's a warlock. Uh, rogue who's like deep and dark and has this horrifically traumatizing past and yet all of them have little bits of my own personality which Mine helps horrifically traumatizing when past. it's mm, yes mm, yes we don't, uh, don't want to go down that road but we'll talk about it later uh, <laughs> but it helps me to be more in the mindset of that character so that when I'm role playing or when I'm in that mode I can think more quickly of what would my character do in this moment because they're always just a little bit like me yeah no i'd i would definitely I'd say def that's a big thing too that um people don't even realize that they're doing it that they every single time you make a fantasy character a piece of you is integrated in there it just makes sense it's it's literally like water from the mountain you're the mountain the water's flowing out of you and like your character is always going to come from the same place you're a piece of it <laughs> you know <laughs> so it's like don't be afraid to make characters that are very similar change the overarching aspects of them but understand that like this is your character so if they're still going to have like roughly the same voice react the same way to certain things like that's okay that's totally cool be you slash be the fantasy you you know which is the best part See, about i think this is a, i think this is a good place for me to chime in because my character in these one shots oh, Ace, has basically just a bit <laughs> It was, and it's both the easiest and hardest role playing I've ever done in my life, because you have I have to be me, and I'm me, yes. However, I also have to be authentically <laughs> me. What a twist! 
I can't think of it as the biggest thing I struggle with is um I have to call in game and I have to make it call as me in this situation, not me playing this character in this situation. That's what got me killed before. Love you. Yeah. Very true. Actually, Becca's a really good example where her characters might be um, fabricated a certain way personality-wise, but a lot of Becca's insides go into those characters and she's like, Ooh, I don't want to do this or uh, I want to do that, and then boom, you know. Um, I got I got fireballed by a monster because it's like, you can sacrifice the NPC to save them, and I'd be like, I want to do this, but Trinity would not, so Trinity is not going to. Therefore, Trinity did. Yeah. Because yeah. she failed both yeah. of her roles. It's it's hard sometimes, right? Because like there was a moment, uh, Michael will remember, where in our old campaign, uh, our <laughs> necromancer gnome uh, wanted us to leave the room because he needed some time to himself. We had already lost a really like Vari's best friend essentially had been killed. Another best friend was away, and she was like, "I'm not going to lose another person." So she said no, and it ensued a full party like pvp moment where we're throwing spells at each other because he's like i want you out of this room and i'm like no like i'm not leaving <laughs> to and, and then quinn's in think. like the sheets of a bed because he set himself on fire you know everything happens for a reason uh but it is hard oh, when you're like i want to make this role play good so my character would behave this way but i'm like this is really bad and like this isn't going to have good consequences but it's what my character would do. You know, not for everything. Like, don't go killing everybody, you know, <laughs> and saying this is what my character would do. I would stab this guy. The clergy of a church is never going to sacrifice someone else to save herself. Right, exactly. Another great thing to think about. So we've already talked about, like, character generation, kind of where to take that. I think we made awesome points. Now, to take it a step further as far as being in character and staying in character um i would definitely like try and push players to once characters are made and you're in the role play to think now realistically that you are physically present as that person in this fantasy world how would your person react like take becca's character for example um yeah she was a clergy member but she was also seeing half of the village she grew up in being torn apart by horrific monsters and they were running for their lives. And it's kind of like, what amount of sheer terror and desperation, what kind of effects would those have on your character, on you even? Because you're putting yourself in the character. It's kind of like, yeah, I wouldn't normally do these bad things and I might regret it later, but I don't even have time to think about regretting it later. I'm going to grab that woman, throw her in front of that fireball and book it because I made it out of here. And then afterwards, it's like shock moment, you know? It's a great way to be in characters. Like, just take a moment. I think advanced role playing, slightly advanced. Think, think like in character. Like, man, this shit's actually happening right now. What would my character really do in this moment? You know, that's I got like tough. a couple months of role play D and D. I've only been to D and D since like February. So, no, I and what really I was saying stuff. too is like, I have seen Becca. I have seen you improved so much just over like the last three weeks i have like that last session you and yeti blew it out of the fucking park i was like so astounded because i know it's hard i've been role playing since college we're almost 30 you know call me grandma it's fine uh but like i've been role playing for a long long time and even i there's moments where dylan's like babe i knew you wanted to do something why didn't you do it i'm like i don't know because i'm nervous and bleh, i don't i don't know <laughs> but like it's been so awesome to see you getting into it and getting more excited and getting into character you've done such an amazing job even from the first time because i'm always secretly back here you guys don't know it i'm always listening in i'm always watching the replays <laughs> This is my life, you know, and you have improved so much. And I just want to applaud you on that because you have done amazing work, even from like section one to now, just a couple of weeks. And it's been so excited to see you getting so into it. And I, I can't wait to see like how much more you do because last session, 10 out of 10. Y'all did awesome. 
a really cool thing about um, role playing is you get to you get to choose flaws, you get to choose hyperfixations, and you get to choose things that your character is going to focus on. For example, um, in the campaign that we were in, my character Quinn, one of his big things was that he could not be ugly. He could like. His mom has taught him that beauty is the only thing that's going to save you. It's the only thing that matters. And so constantly I would make a point to go, okay, I'm changing my outfit. Or I'm checking how I look. And there was a big moment where because of a choice I made, I became ugly. And when I say ugly, Quinn, like full breakdown, full stop, like I'm a monster. I, everything I know is out the window. And, it, and there was a moment where I could get all of that back. I could become more beautiful. I could become powerful. I could become safe. It, now, out of character, that was one of the worst things I could have chosen to do. Because it, my party was like, what the fuck is happening? But Quinn, you're not going to erase 20 years of something being drilled into you just because you've have friends for the first time, you know? And so making that decision like, oh, fuck this, make me beautiful again. Like, I'm going to do what I can. And it's not my fault that I'm choosing this. It's their fault. Give your character something that it, they're going to fixate on because once they have that fixation of I'm going to protect this, I am upset about this, it allows you to easily guide yourself because you're like, well, if I want to be beautiful, if I want to be the prettiest person in the room, there are certain things that's going to tick me off. Oh, that they're wearing better jewels than I am? I want to steal that. Oh, they look better they, than I am? That provided so much up. good role play and so much character development of Quinn's character because my character, Vari, was just very much like, what is your fucking problem? Like, all you care about is being pretty and our friends are dying over here everyone's left you behind except for us like do you not understand that you have support and you don't give a shit and like, and, yeah, like it, it caused some really serious like really heavy role play moments i'm pretty sure Bruin slapped the shit out of him at one point and was like get your shit together and like it was a huge moment oh, I Character lost development. Email. there you go character development is always good always good you know, I'm a little curious to hear about some of your player characters specifically, Dylan. My player none characters? None of us have actually played with you before, so I have no idea what your play style is like. <laughs> My, You're very uh, professional as a DM, which makes your player style very hard to read. Um, Ooh, good point. <laughs> yeah, I don't really get to be a player very often, ever, which is probably why I always kind of default to my main character. Um, F's in chat, boys. F's in chat. <laughs> yeah, for real. The minute I found that out, dude, I was like, I am DMing a game for this motherfucker. I want to see how he plays. I, <laughs> I love I want to do a one shot for you, Dylan. <laughs> I love this character I made because, like I said, every character should have like a piece of you in them and a flaw just like Michael said, and different aspects of them that are really important. So when I made this character, um, I just kind of was honest with myself. I was like, look, I just want this character to be separate from my reality. Like, everything I want to be in life, this character is going to represent. Like, everything I personally aspire to be, this character is going to represent in a fantasy setting. So that was like literally first thought. Boom. Stuck that in there. So I made Kanan Honorius, the warrior paladin of Tyr. And I had a lot of fun with that character because um, essentially this guy is just like just the machoest macho man ever. But like he's incredibly eloquent. He always has the right thing to say. He's charming, but he's also kind of like the thy thou with people. You know, he's like, pray tell, young fair maiden. I have come to save thee. You know, like he's like very just like <laughs> not of not of like this world, not reality. He's like straight up fantasy, just the big knight, but the big not, noble character. Um, not obnoxiously Prince Charming, though, I hope. No, he's not obnoxious. In fact, <laughs> I had a lot of fun. So this is a good example of Kanan. Um, I, played a, I played into a very, very short campaign because the DM was terrible and all the players quit. But I played Oof. a short campaign with these people 
And this is a really cool. Is that me or? <laughs> this is a really cool Kanan moment that kind of describes his whole character. Um, so the DM had set us up in a town, essentially, where these bandits came in, burned down a tavern in broad daylight because a dwarf owed them money that owned the tavern. Kanan was immediately like, no. He's like, this is ridiculous. Like, this is just unjust and insane. So, like, he's like, nope. He did the Kanan thing. He's like, I'm going to rouse everyone in this town. I'm going to lead these people to victory into the promised land. Like, he just, he's a leader of men. He's courageous and he inspires people. That's exactly what I had him do. I derailed the DM's campaign pretty hard by doing it. <laughs> but that's what my character wanted to do. So, Kanan was like, he's like, Aren't you sick of this? It's like, it's time to be free! And, like, he got all these people riled up. So I ended up coming up with an army of peasants on the fly to attack, like, the bandit <laughs> the hideout. Peasant cannon. Is, that a, is that a manga? <laughs> Please tell me you set up a peasant cannon. A peasant Please tell cannon? me you're familiar with the, with the peasant cannon. Are you at least familiar? Literally sticking peasants in a cannon? Oh my god. No! <laughs> like, a cannon made out of peasants, okay? Wait, sorry, wait, wait, sorry wait, 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 wait. Hang on. Wait to see where I'm going with this. There's a lot of mechanics that go into this, right? So, um, basically what you do is you set up a line of peasants, like a mile long. Hold on, roll persuasion first. Well, yeah. You gotta to make that. You you gotta actually... It's very situational, but when you set it up, it is a force of mass destruction, Okay. So basically what you do is you set up a line of peasants a mile long, right? You give the one in the back a big-ass fucking boulder. One, They can still lift it, though. And what you do is you have them all ready in action to catch the boulder behind them and throw it in front of them. This all happens simultaneously. This boulder is flying a mile fast in six, seven, six seconds. It's traveling at Mach 9. This thing can destroy <laughs> fortresses. <laughs> Well, I, I feel like this wouldn't work. I can't say I've done that. <laughs> I'm very intrigued. Yeah, so, I want to see an animation of this. Defense and we get rid of peasants. I'm here for both of those things. <laughs> but yeah, I had a lot of fun. So that's one character I made was just like my first thought was like me. And how I cannot be me, because the idea is to, like, take myself out of reality and into role-playing, because that's just my idea of what role-playing is. It's why we all do it, right? We get to play make-believe again, like we did when we were kids. And kids always get to pick, you know, the hero they want to be or the villain they want to be. And, that, and with that comes, like, all the attributes you can think of. Why do you want to be Captain America? Or why do you want to be that guy? It's like, oh, well, easy. Like, Captain America is like, he's super strong and courageous and this, that. And, like, he has to, like, overcome all these things. And it's like, boom. All of those reasons are why you want to play that character. Make that character. You know? So a little bit of a real-world idea of how you can translate your, your aspirations of a fantasy character into your fantasy character. So that's kind of, like, my idea of it. You know, that's why you guys have probably seen left and right on the Discord, it'll be like, what are your character's fears? What are your character's aspirations? What do they want more than anything? You know, um, and like when you really think about that, it makes for a really interesting character. And like in Quinn's instance, or Michael's character, Quinn, it, it was it was a very we, we only know Michael as Quinn, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Frankie, 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 when I talk about you, it's oh Quinn. Yeah, Frankie and yeah, Quinn. I, don't know name. I I was just like, who is Stephanie? Like, right? Like, no, that's what? Mari. What are you talking about? Like, yeah, Mari. Oh, that makes sense. That's just how in character we got in that in that campaign that we literally started to confuse ourselves in reality because it's like those characters represented something big from us. You know, it was it was awesome. It was really. Mm -hmm. I think talking about a lot of these like superhero traits, I think it's important to also remember your flaws. Because it's great yes. to be that strong, courageous Captain America, but, you know, three sessions in, that's going to get boring quick. Um, I remember making a character called Zhuk, who effectively encapsulated every single one of my flaws that I could think about. Um... And this is where we get onto the topic of using D&D &D for therapy. 
because um, being able to I I want to say visualize and in at least in the fantasy world materialize certain flaws about yourself you can actually harness them and deal with them in a healthy medium instead of having to be constantly weighed down by them in the real world like Zhuk was constantly haunted by his past mistakes um at the age of 30 he abandoned his family uh, well he didn't abandon them he left on a journey um as an adventurer and in the process effectively got uh tangled up with an infernal being <laughs> who um hypnotized him and put him into a uh like almost like a state of trance and he became his personal bounty hunter effectively and at the end of it like the, one of the big twists is that um he's actually hypnotized into killing his own family um <laughs> and in that he's left with all these scars um but still freedom though uh that he has family to... do you <laughs> no of course not no of course not it's it's a massive exaggeration but <laughs> i just really I think that's don't really like important. them I, I think that's really them. important to, to understand that for a lot of people. I'm not a murderer. I right, <laughs> just right. Let, all of you know. just let everybody know. No, I think it's really important <laughs> for me specifically. I have never been ashamed. I have never been quiet about my my personal mental health struggles. I struggle from a lot of trauma. I am on a lot of medication and getting away from reality was one of the only ways i survived as a child books video games D, &D being able to get out of what i was in the only way i survived so i get really overexcited i'm really into it you know i'm i'm having books upon books of character ideas and i have a million characters in my mind i'm always going dylan what about this and dylan what about that and i feel like i'm <laughs> so annoying the entire time uh, you know the villain now but oh i'm so sorry I love bugs biscuit. buttermilk biscuit um <laughs> but it's it's something that i think people can struggle with in the beginning is getting excited because i know what's outside of the community still thinks D &D is getting bigger. The nerd community is getting bigger, but as somebody that, so I paid for my college through professional gaming. I did a lot of really interesting things and the nerd community is still very toxic. It's very toxic. No matter how big we get and no matter how inclusive we try to be, there is still a lot of toxicity in the nerd community and that's really hard to deal with. So a lot of times you go into a session and you're really in character and you're really into it. Everybody's like, Oh, mm. Mm. and they can get a little weird, which can cause, you know, when you get in with us, right? And we're all like, get big, jump out of your chair. I don't care. Start dancing, like do whatever you want to do. <laughs> Pull a yeti and, and walk out the door. <laughs> I'm so into it. Like get there because in the end, this is a safe place. And it has to be, because I cannot tell you how many times during the Proterran campaign where I'd go to Dylan, I'm like, I don't know, like, not today. Today's not my day. I cannot do this. I don't want to do this. And he essentially, in his own way, very, very safely, kind of forced me to do it, you know? He was like, no, babe, you can't. We already canceled last week because of your bullshit. You got to do it this week, you know? And, and thank God our players very... were so understanding, because so often it literally was. I can't do it this week, guys. I'm really sorry. And we would get back in together. And I always felt better at the end of it because I did it. I mean, that's very, very true. I think more often than not, and maybe Michael isn't necessarily aware. I mean, no one really was in the campaign, but like this happened very often where Stephanie just had really bad mental health days. And gently, I had to like push her to do it. And literally, it was like a night and day thing just the interactive nature of being in a role play being with your friends you know it really brings brings you to a place of calm and then like yeah playing out your character just kind of like takes you out of reality long enough for you to finally just kind of get a grasp on everything again and just be yourself again so it's yeah i think the therapy thing was an amazing thing to bring up
Um, if it's if if it's not putting anyone on the spot, I'm really curious. Like between you three, you got because you guys haven't managed to chime in on this topic yet. Like, does it is it therapeutic for you in any way, or have you not really thought of it that way? Listen, this <laughs> is I'm a topic. About to throw down. <laughs> Listen, this is a topic that is near and dear to me. Like personally, when you talk about like. Uh, some, like you said, the community being a little toxic and how it's kind of hard to join a new group and like be authentic in yourself and in your characters. That's true. Um, like particularly whenever I start playing, I am not only am I a person of color, I'm also very uh, queer. I'm very gay. And no, you're not. Don't lie to them. I'm very, I am. You're going to marry me. What the fuck are you talking about? Listen, listen, my, my husband, so <laughs> my, I'm looking for that dual income household and he has to make most of the money because I'm a teacher and that ain't going to work. But you get married for the tax benefits. That's all. <laughs> listen, exactly. I don't want to work anymore. I want to be a house husband, but that's another point. Well, I'm just we saying, talk about. like Dylan flexed on me pretty hard that they got, they got money. They got it. Oh, no. You see that? You no. see now? See that background. They got money. They got money, money. money. Uh, I've, seen, I've seen the schools. I've seen you guys shopping for the bar. I know what's there. But <laughs> but um, when I come into any session, um, like I'm completely unapologetic and I I go for it every single time, and I want to be able to do things that other people's characters can do. Like I want to flirt with that guy, or I want to like like do that. And sometimes when it's when it's when you do that type of thing, it's also about the DM's comfortability with what's happening. And so like Dylan made it a very good point of like every time I wanted to do something, why like in the very first session of our game. My character was an ex-prostitute. I walked up on this guard, got all up in his face, and then reached behind him and stabbed him directly through the back with his own short sword. And it's like, I don't, I would never have been able to do that, like in some of the other campaigns where I've walked in and I'm like, okay, well, I want to do this. And they're like, okay. But being, in my day-to-day life, I'm a very sweet person. I want to start with that. I'm a very nice, I don't loving stab people individual. In the back. I don't stab people in the back. <laughs> I might wag my finger at one of my students at the most. But when I get into D&D, I feel like I get to be the type of person who I can say what's on my mind and I can be more like outwardly aggressive and I can I can say things. I can be catty. I can be bitchy. I can be... I could be as queer as I want to be in a space that is accepting of me and that I can have this fun where I really don't get to do that in my day-to-day life, working a very professional job the way I do. And being able to interact with students and see them feel that way, see them experience this for the first time, it makes me so happy because I run a D&D club at my school. I was just and, about to ask that. And the, student, and the students came to me about starting it. And they were like, we want, we know you play D and D because you talk about it a lot. Can you, can we do that? That's incredible. Have, That's incredible. I have, I had to get it approved through the district because they were like, a church six years ago was upset about it. They were like, so we need to, you to fill out all this paperwork. And every year I have to refill this paperwork out. And so I just got them refilling paperwork. It's going to take two weeks before I'm approved again. For the kids to be able to play D and D and be able to do the things they want to do, and I'm going to do it every single year because these kids want it. They need a creative outlet, and for some of them, it just gets them out of the house for for two hours every other day, giving them something to do. And if I get them in the room, they have some. They know they're going to get snacks. They know they're going to get someone who's willing to talk to them, and they know they get to kill a dragon every now and again. But it's not. It's, look, I nerfed those dragons so hard, you guys. <laughs> These kids are so sweet. But tactical thinking is not where it's at. Let's fight a black dragon. Well, uh, well, hold on. Uh... <laughs> well, Becca, what about what about you? What is what is D and D to you? Me? Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, 
I mean, I've known about D and D for a while, but I, I haven't, like I said, I haven't really gotten into it until just a couple of months ago. And um, I've always, I've always been one for role play. I a few years ago, I was in a text based role play with a friend of mine, and we kept it up for a couple of years, which was fun. Um, yeah. But I was mostly just afraid of groups because mm-hmm. I'm, I'm very antisocial. It may not seem like I am, but that's just my ADHD talking. So I seem like an extrovert sometimes, but I'm not. So I get I get scared very easily. I'm I I can act like I'm strong and brave, but I'm very fragile. So I I, I kind of get scared when I walk into giant D and D groups, and it's like, and then everyone is like big and happy, and then I start to open up and get better. So it's it's very it helps me see people better because I'm I'm very pessimistic too. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the online community will do that to you in a heartbeat. I mean, I get discouraged every day just building this channel, just building the stream, just building everything I'm building. And it's like, it's tough, man. People don't want you to succeed. And, <laughs> you know, um, there's just a lot coming at you, and a lot of energies, and a lot of people who've been doing this a long time who will just beat you at every point so you never feel successful. But, like, yeah, it's. I think this is where the magic is. This is what makes it worth it, is, like, being able to sit down talk with the people we affect and and how this affects them you know i think that's definitely the best part about it and yeah like we've been talking about like we see you coming out of your show all the time and what i mean seriously we are so happy to have you <laughs> like Absolutely. you know primary Absolutely. like yes round of applause for becca everyone like round of applause everyone and i you know i totally understand uh what a lot what i don't seem like and a lot of people don't realize is i am extraordinarily introverted I can spend days by myself and it will not matter. Like I can literally just be in my space and have no one talk to me. And I would be so happy. So happy <laughs> to the I'm point where like, percent introvert. <laughs> well, th- that's the thing is my, my best friend, Sarah, she knows, like, she's like, if I don't message you, you won't message me. And I was like, yeah, I know. Cause I'm like very happy with myself right now. I don't need you in my space, but you do. Right. Like, even the most introverted people still need social. You want to? You take my refresher. Oh. So am I. Rude. Um, now this. Now this. This is too much. So, this is, this <laughs> is, yeah, like, like even for we we need that. Need, I need yeah. social time, and I need place where I can feel comfortable, and it always helps, even just a little bit, because I can choose. I want to be in this session. You know, it is my choice. Is my, I want to be in this session. There's a lack of girls in D and D too. Yes, so and there's a massive lack of, of girls that want to take it seriously. And I hate to say that as a female because I hate to look on other girls as like, "Why are you doing this?" But I love this. This is something really important to me. Something that I think on day in and day out. Something that has helped me through a lot of very serious times in my life. And so I go into this and I'm ready, you know, like, I'm like, let's get deep into character. Let's get down and dirty. Like, let's get it. And then, you know, you get the, oh my God. And I'm like, this isn't for you. Please stop. You're not taking this seriously. And it's really upsetting me, but I'm only mad because I want to be like, I can help you get into character. I can help you make this serious. Let me help you. And so much, sometimes it can be for attention. And that's why, like, I'm so happy that we're building a really good community of D&D girls. I mean, we have Becca, we have Val, we have Robin. My friend Sarah will come in in and out. She's really busy. She just started a new job, but she'll be in here soon. And, like, to have this really awesome, good community of girls that aren't trying to take advantage, that aren't trying to, like, you know, what a lot of nerd girls can do. And I hate to say that because I am a girl and I am a feminist. Like, do you, boo? Have your titties out, make your money. I don't care. <laughs> but don't but don't ruin I'm, the community for I'm other gonna... people. <laughs> no, like, don't don't ruin the community for other people. That yeah, don't drop that OnlyFans link in the Discord. Like, right. It's, it's, I'm not um, saying that. So, back to... um. D&D as a therapy device. I actually have a lot to say on this. I wanted to let everyone else get in. The floor is yours, Ace. The floor is yours. Um, I actually, I want to start by talking about my own personal perspective on this, and then my own perspective on this as a DM. Um, personally, I was in the roughest part of my life when I started playing D&D. However, two things 
I also just started a job in sales. Now, I hate selling. Selling is the worst. Never sell. <laughs> it's, it's the worst. It's the most scumbag environment. However, it also breeds positivity. Literally every morning it was go to the office. We don't talk about work or anything. We talk about how can we stay positive while we're working. And it'd be like a million different exercises and lectures, and we'd have guest speakers come in and talk about it. And it was this whole thing. And eventually when you're around enough of that fake positivity, because, you know, you have to do that just to get into the headspace. Um, I, I eventually got fed up with it, and I left the job. But um, I took a lot of that away from myself. It taught me that positivity was um, was important. It was important to breed positivity because then people will feed off of your positivity and you just end up surrounded in positivity. And that translates over to D&D very, very well. Um, and I feel like that saved my life. Now, as a DM, I DM for a whole hodgepodge of people. Um, <laughs> Dylan met most of them. I'm so sorry. Is that, is that Pokemon Fire Red in your background? Leaf green. It, Leaf green. Okay, cool. Of, I was just making sure I was right. I'm so sorry. Continue. <laughs> it's a video of a nuzlocke, but um, I DM for I hate, I hate, I hate. a large group of people in which my nickname on the server is the token straight guy. <laughs> <laughs> they were. It was very. These are people that are very like. Uh, there are uh, uh, two of my players are trans. Um, one of my players is non-binary. Uh, I have two gay players. Um, and it's, they also just happen to be, v have very bad experiences with the people around them finding out about their situation. Um, and it basically came to the point where they were, they saw me when I showed up and they were like, cis white dude, cis white dude, cis white dude. And then I got stoned as fuck and DM'd an amazing game for them. And eventually just turned around their perspective. Now I'm the token straight guy. And, um, you know, they look to me to provide them with a great game. And we've also created like a nice little family because I'm very insistent on not being the only DM in a game. I feel like if I play with you guys, it becomes more of a companionship because it, the DM is a very authoritarian role. Like, I can promise you right now, every single one of you looks at Dylan as a very more in charge person than anyone else in this party. And I guarantee you that would go away if he played two games with you. With someone you know, else DMing. So think about that. <laughs> yeah, maybe really in charge. But if Dylan was to play in one of my one shots, then, uh... <laughs> no, it's... That's that's awesome. And and yeah, mm -hmm. like I'm sure it's 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 very good for your um community that you've built because all those people are like you said kind of on the fringes of society almost in a way, being trans or having to make these choices in their life where like they might feel a little excluded, but then like D&D &D can take two communities that kind of judge each other between sexualities, between races, stuff like that. Communities that tend to judge each other on the grand scheme of things and it just brings them together because we're all here for like the same thing you know to get out of reality and just be together so yeah i think it's therapy for like everyone and like i remember i was shocked to hear from michael in my campaign as well as um gg yeah gg she she's she's been gone a while but michael and gg both have like um you know they lean more towards the other side of sexuality and um uh, they both told me, and I was really shocked to hear, it's like, we, this is the most accepting we've ever had a DMB of anything gay or anything along these lines, or just, like, playing with the spectrum wherever we're along on. It's, like, the most accepting we've ever experienced. And I was like, really? Like, it's just natural to me. Like, I'm not going to shut you down for whatever you're going to do. Um, the reality behind the scenes is, like, yeah, I'm very much a very straight guy. So, like, I might get a little, like, I have to role play as a in a gay interaction and I'm not gay. That's it's a little weird. <laughs> it's a little weird, but like that doesn't stop the Dylan, role play. The show goes on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, we had conversations because we talked about it. We had a whole after one of the sessions, we had a group thing and you know, 
I kind of called Dylan out a little bit because I think it needs to be said was that he has told me he's not always comfortable, but that doesn't mean that he's going to put judgment or stop somebody from being themselves. You know, we are not going to be comfortable with something we don't know, and that's okay and that's fine, but that doesn't mean we cannot accept and allow people to still be themselves. And that's where I think so many people have an issue and something I'm really excited about, one that you're all here, one that Yeti even brought up this conversation because this is a safe space. It has to be. As the girlfriend of the DM who suffers from a lot of mental health issues, this has to be a safe place, you know, Mm -hmm. so that everyone can have fun, everybody can enjoy, and everybody has a say. Like, if there is a problem, you say it and we fix it and we move on. If there's a day where it's just, you know, as somebody that came from the gaming community, most of my friends that I've known for the longest, I have never met in my life. They are my Steam friends and I've known them for 15 years and they literally know everything about me. They are my best friends and I've never once spoken a word to them in real life. And there are people that I built this community with that all my friends outside of you know the computer and everything, I don't feel as strongly about because I can literally go, hey, I'm having a bad day. This is what's going on. Let me get it out. And they're there and they understand. And then we go play a really fucking cool game of D&D. We all feel better. We end it by killing or saving a dragon. Or saving a dragon because I love my dragons. And you build this like friendship. Like if Gigi ever wanted to come back, that's a whole situation that I'm really sad about. And I love her and I miss her. And if she ever wanted to come back, hell's fucking yeah. Like she is in this. I want her back. I want her saved. You know, if y'all ever needed to take a step back and y'all wanted to come back in, 100%. Like, at the end of the day, this is a law. (laughs) (laughs) It's a lot. Um, And it's not something that I'm in the realm to share because it is her business. I will stay out of it then. But uh, we were really worried about her for, and still am, because Michael, I don't know. I tried to contact her. I haven't heard from her at all. I haven't either. I've uh, sent her a couple of messages because I, quite frankly, when I was uh, meeting the person who's like right now is my boyfriend and everything, you won't understand. I was sending them text messages through Discord. I was like, no, okay, so. In the loop about the situation. Look, that's going to be another night. We're going to get some wine. We'll, look, we'll, we'll figure it out. Because then, like, right after our campaign, it was like grad school got kicked up. And, like, I'm, I was, like, I was overwhelmed with everything I was doing. But I stayed, like, in the chat. I was, like, watching. Like, everything was getting built up. And I was, like, I really need to, like, take the energy and be, like, I'm going to be back. I just have to do it. And now that I'm finally in a position where I can be, like, okay, I'm back into d and I can keep playing again. I'm, I was so happy that this was here so I could just – hop right in and be like, hey, I want to help out. I want to play. I want to be in this. Yeah. Plus, you guys were pretty cool, I guess. I mean, I was... <laughs> <laughs> I guess. It is a safe space for everybody. And we are accepting of everybody and everybody's play styles. Our, our role play style is a little different, I think, than what a lot of people run. And that's okay if they don't vibe with us. That's fine. They're still welcome. Yo. That would be a really good topic to move on to, Mm -hmm. is roleplay styles. Mm -hmm. Like, Mm -hmm. what you guys have experienced and prefer, maybe compared to what, like, what would we do? Because we are are extraordinarily roleplay heavy. I mean, we have had multiple one-shots now where there's no combat. And a lot of players aren't necessarily into that, you know? Combat is hard, especially when, in in this scenario, death is, like, Death is not death saving though. Death is death, so it's kind of it's kind of scarier. It's very. So play is definitely. Both play is very definitely noticeable preferred. that you make it so easy to die because you don't want us to fight. I think it does add an element of value to combat though, because whenever we do get an instance where we actually have to do combat, because we haven't done it so much in the past, it actually means that we value those combat sessions more because we think oh shit this is where everything's about to throw down i could lose my character <laughs> oh god could die do you feel like you're missing out on anything because the sessions are a little less combat heavy not really um combat has 
at least in my eyes, always kind of been just, oh, cool, XP. But now the idea of combat and XP have been separated from each other. And so I kind of look at combat as just a nice custom little add-on that just adds to the story. But yeah, it's like a little... From. Space. Uh, you can very much die from it's it's now just an edge to the to the story instead of just oh cool have some have some xp this is a very interesting perspective for me to hear because i am a very big power gamer to a certain <laughs> extent <laughs> like i try not to be so obvious about it but i do have these like 300 damage in one turn builds that i have Sat down and created oh, min maxing. <laughs> Little min maxer, yes, you are. So was me, it's okay. Hello, nine one one. We have your man. This is a very. I'm just trying to say it's a very interesting perspective to hear as someone who primarily focuses has focused combat in the past. Nowadays, I try and keep a healthy mix. I still, you know best best and worst worst but um i try to focus more on my character however these one shots do i find myself using my sheet a lot less playing a hexblade which is a very combat heavy class um however that's also a good thing to a certain degree because it allows me to focus more on the pl character side i guess michael got bored of what i was saying <laughs> I think he's living with his niece right now, so I think he mm. might have to step away for her, y'all. Yeah. Huh. It's all good. It's fine. No, that's awesome to hear, because that's ultimately the big goal. Like, I haven't exactly like, written out the, the, you know, the mission statement of what I'm doing, but like, the biggest goal was to get away from the character sheets and get into character, to change the perspective of role-playing, because I feel like, um, like his version of role playing is very much the norm like outside of watching big time streamers and celebrities do their role plays outside of actually watching that when people are doing it it's all combat and there's no depth to the npcs there's no thinking outside the box on things so like it's really awesome that you guys are it's, it's good to hear i guess that you guys are kind of getting these elements you know you're kind of like you know what yeah i'm kind of noticing it's like i have to think a little more you know, I have to feel a little more, which is bigger than thinking, but both are still huge, huge, huge goals for us as far as, like, the more people we bring in, the more we want to, like, show them. Or it's just, like, this can really change your life. You can achieve moments like we did in our campaign where the, the way I describe it is the role play comes to life. The role play has a life of its own, and it's an incredible feeling if you ever get there. It's usually only achievable in campaigns, but... The role play coming to life is just like this golden mercury like moment when everyone literally forgets who they are and they're so in character that they're literally fighting with each other or even coming together and performing acts of like amazing glory as their characters and just forget reality. And like the, ses the session ends and we have a post session talk and everyone's like, holy crap, what just happened? Like... <laughs> I was like, I did not expect any of this happening. I didn't even know what was happening. It just did. I was like, because it became so natural. Um, whenever you really get into character and you have that that role play comes to life thing. And like, it, it's just a great thing. It's so hard to describe, you know. And it was a little moment. You know, it wasn't a big deal, but we encountered a wizard. And Anakin's character wanted to talk to him and try to befriend him so we can help share his knowledge. And Brea was like, no, this guy just fucking killed everybody. I'm too worried about him. I don't want us to die. I'm going to kill him right now. <laughs> she, 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 she's like, Bo ready. Like, oh, no, I'm not. I'm not fucking with this man. And it was this whole interaction where Anakin's like, no, we can use him and it's fine. And like, we want his knowledge. And I'm like, oh, no, I don't want to do this. And it's just like, we, we sat there for like 10 minutes, just in character back and forth, just having like this dialogue completely in character we did not break character once and it was yeah. phenomenal and it was the smallest thing it was so little you know but it's so nice to just like be in that moment and be there i i thoroughly loved it uh and then i totally uh sat on the sarcophagus and dishonored the dead that's fine 
Everything's fine. Here's a big I've question. Never... Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I'll, I'll say no, ask no, 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 Dylan, Dylan, this is, this is your floor. No, no, Yeti. Yeah, yeah, oh. go ahead. I'll remember. We are all equal here. God, fuck. Um, all right. I've never really been in a campaign or any real group of D&D &D long enough to really flesh out an actual community. And this is pretty much the first community that I actually feel like I might stay for more than like a month. So you guys have really brought like just, I think the start to quite an insane chapter in my life. Uh, even though I've only known you guys for like a couple of weeks now, but still I can really see myself falling in love with every single one of you. <laughs> right. I love that about <laughs> I love that about roleplay too. Is it's like in reality, um, we're we're at best acquaintances, but it's really even just hard to even think of it that way at this point. It's like, no, these are our guys. These are our people. Like, you know, we're here to roleplay, and we get excited to see each other. Oh, you know? oh, and we talk about you guys all the time. Like, I want oh, you to no. know we're oh, like, you're like, like, teachers. Oh. You're like that thing that Yeti did, or that thing that Becca did, or like Ace. It's always God damn it, Ace. Uh, <laughs> I see how it is. Because Ace is this wonderful. You are this wonderful chaotic energy that we all need in our life. <laughs> Ace is. Sorry. Ace, Ace I, bears? I love what he does, <laughs> you know, and I described it to uh, <laughs> Stephanie because, like she said, we pretty much talk about everyone. We talk about you guys all the time. <laughs> you know, in a healthy, constructive way. But, like. God, I hate that. Oh just like, I was like, I love having Ace around. Like, he'll break the fourth wall every once in a while. He'll cause some chaos, cause some mischief, some shit you just didn't expect. You know? But it's, oh my god, is it so needed. Like, he plays... That's his personality, too, coming out. I like being the comic relief. Yeah. Well, and something I want to say, too. We're talking about this, because I'm one of those people that, like... We all assume that everybody knows the positive things that we think about them. So we don't say them. We only talk about the negative stuff, right? But I'm the type of person that I'm like, no, Yeti, your first session blew me and Dylan out of the fucking park. You ended, and I was like, bruh, Yeti's fucking line? amazing. Like, like I'm, I'm I'm him, on him, your really energy was great, and your create create creativity. Cre I wanted to say creatism. Uh, your <laughs> creatine. We're working out, guys. Ignore us. Uh, but the your creativity and your backstory and your character, your energy, phenomenal. Like, and I want, like, I need it. I need verbal validation because it makes me know that I'm doing the right thing. Yeti, you are incredible. We are so happy to have you here. Becca, I love you to fucking pieces. You are the most adorable person, like, I've ever seen. You make me so happy. <laughs> and seeing you come out of your child has been so much fun. Ace, you give me gray hairs. But I love it, and please never change. <laughs> I love your energy. I love the bullshit. You and Vari would get along so well, you have no idea. Like... I want you guys to know you are all welcome to love. And we literally, we talk about you guys all the time because you're amazing. Like, we're always, I, like, when he told me about um, the, the Rat King session, I was like, wait, what happened? I want to see the video right now. Show me Becca's part. Show me Yeti's part. Like, I got to see this. Like, I want to see it. And he sat down. And I was, I, I, I like, was late for an appointment. I was like, no, I got to see this before we go. Like. This is the community we want, and this is why we're here, because this is supposed to be fun and positive and do something for you, and I love all you guys. I'm going to shut up now because I don't know how to stop talking. Goodbye. You guys have built a community that is so incredibly positive and expressively free.